<laughs> All right, so for people who haven't been out to LA or been to Hollywood, um, I want to talk about making friends in Hollywood. How's that work? Um, do you feel like you have a lot of friends in Hollywood? Do you feel like you have uh, friends here at all? Um, uh, what, do you, what do you think about that process out here? No, for sure. I treat it like freshman orientation in college. Mm -hmm. I just go, go around, I talk to people. I go to, network event, I go to networking events. I go to all the parties, not parties like, but like all the networking events that they have. And I just start talking to people, acting class. Um, and I'm, I'm a little bit different. I'll, if I, I'll strike up a conversation with someone at a mall or at a, at a grocery store. And as we're talking, we both figure out we're in the same industry or whatever. Or just in general, we just you know have a mutual liking to something. And we connect that way. But I don't feel like I have a lot of friends in Hollywood. I think it's actually best to have a small group of friends and a lot of associates, people that like you and people that you're cool with, right. people that think that, they're, that you guys are friends. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think that's better because if everyone's your friend, then in my opinion, you don't really have any friends. Yeah, that's true. Um, LA is a hard place to make friends, guys. It's not like uh, how it was for me back in Kansas City. Yeah. It's not like it was for you back in St. Louis. Because the cost of living is so high, and any place you go where the cost of living is as high as it is here, People seem, you tend to see the worst sides of people or the most survivalist sides of people. Uh, people rely on survival instinct. And so you will have people try to shortcut you here or do this and do that. So you're really amongst a lot of associates. Um, I use the word friend lightly, um, you know, moving forward in my life just because, you know, you, you are going to have very few friends. You have very few people who um, can can fight the temptation of betrayal. Like if I, um, let's say you have a project, a great IP idea, and I can see that, and I, I, I can see that being beneficial to me. And let's say you share with me for some reason that you didn't copyright it yet, or you're going to copyright, you're going to do this and that. For me to go behind your back and start producing this said project is, which is supposed to be your family's meal ticket out of your situation. Yeah. Um, and guys, I, I want to finish this thought about the whole betrayal thing, but just know if you have a project, copyright it, try, do whatever you have to do uh, immediately. Something. Yeah. Just to create a paper trail, make sure that it's yours, and so you don't face any legal issues in the future. Absolutely, and we're and that's going to be next episode. Now that we've talked about it, Co <laughs> copywriting, uh, patents, trademarks, all that kind of good stuff. Um, but for this one, uh, real friends are few and far in between. You know them when you're around them, um, but everyone else write them off as associates. Write them off as associates. There's a lot of vultures in this industry. Uh, a lot of people who. Uh, feed upon what's dead or what's injured and try to make a living out of that. What can you do for me? What can you do for me? Yeah. Right. A lot of us, what, what, a lot of us, what you can do for, what, what you can do for me. Yep. And so guys, you must, you got to focus on building, build, build, build. I hate it has to be the way we have to build. There's really not much time for, for coffee and, and friends here because they, they don't exist and, and they really don't. You have to build, maintain your relationships, build in the right areas too. I noticed this is huge, guys. And I, I've seen this myself time and time again. The people at the bottom of this industry are, 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 have been the worst of people that I've run into. Um, the ones who actually eat, the ones who are actually the movers and shakers, um, are some of the most real people I've ever met. And so, and so just know the optimistic part about this whole system is the closer you get to the top, the more, the, the better people you start being amongst. It's crazy. All my friends who are eating, they don't have, they don't really have room in their stomach for envy. They don't have room in their stomach for any uh, malicious thought towards you. It's just we're eating, we're satisfied. When you're on set making a movie with your co-stars, mm -hmm. there's gonna be no, there's not gonna be animosity there amongst anybody on that set because you guys are all there to have a common goal. Yeah, 
it's the ones who starve that you really get a hard time with. You're newer to LA, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear your thoughts farther. No, no dude, I agree 100%. And shout out to my friend Katie. Mm -hmm. She actually really is a good friend. And the reason I say that is because she, she has given me so much great, just like you have. Mm -hmm. She has given me so much great advice and so much great wisdom just for being out here for 10 years. And I remember she invited me to her birthday party. And we're in the same acting class, by the way. And I saw no one else in the acting class. It was just me. And, you know, I was sitting next to her. And she's like, you know, Josh, I invited you to my birthday party because I consider you as a part of my inner circle. I don't really mess with a lot of people. You're the only one who I invited from class. And that really meant a lot to me. And that made me sit in my car and think, like, it's definitely best to have an inner circle of people, mm -hmm. people who you call friends, people that, who you can rely on right. versus trying to be friends with everyone. Right. You know, it's all about creating that boundary. Yeah. And it's very, like, I'm very, I, I don't like to share a lot of, like, projects that I'm working on currently or anything with people just because, yeah. no, I don't. I don't at all. Like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm working on this. Like, usually I ask people, oh, what are you working on? You know, or like, oh, what was your favorite project that you did? And, you know, advice from you. And they'll, they'll just go on and on and on. And they tell me more about themselves and the projects they wound up working on now and everything. But right. Something that I realized about the best way to make friends or to make friends or to get people to like you, which is really what we should be talking about is, and I learned this from selling in a selling course I took, if you get the person who you're talking to to talk about them, this is anybody, they will, they will see you in a much more positive light because people never remember what you say and people never really remember what they say. But if there's one thing that people do remember, it's how you made them feel. Mm -hmm. If you make someone feel good, they might not remember what you said that made them feel good. Absolutely. But they're going to remember how you made them feel. Yeah. And I feel like that I've been really good about that is just trying to be positive, trying to spread good into the world, not trying to spread good into the world, just not being a, just not being a jackass. Yeah. You know, not being a, not being a jackass, not being shysty, none of yeah. that. And just, uh, you know, yeah, but I don't have a lot of friends. It's been like you're you're one you're you're the only one who I really hang out with. I have another friend who I hang out with, but that's really it. At least out here in LA, I don't really have a lot of friends. Yeah, that, yeah. And I like hey, flip this conversation on its head um, in the right right direction, guys. Um, you know, I've been out here a little bit longer. I've a had, little bit, a lot. <laughs> I've been out here a lot a bit longer, and you know, I had to I had to, I had to take the hard you know swallow the hard pill and realize I'm not. This isn't Kansas anymore. I, I don't want to say it's, it's, this isn't Kansas anymore. But truth is, I'm not from Kansas, guys. I'm from Kansas City, um, Kansas City, Missouri. But with that being said, it's not Kansas City anymore. And I had to, I had to realize that. Now, the direction you're taking is the way it should be going. Let's talk about the things that are actually going to help you guys. I say it all the time. Your past doesn't need you, but your future does. And so what can you use in the future? Stop asking, um, you know, do I have good friends? And start asking, am I a good friend? You know, as, as, as the first part, am I a good friend? When it comes to uh, business connections, you do want, there's something called relationship equ uh, equity. Relationship equity is based on the strength of your relationships, but more importantly, how that person views you on a character basis is, is what it comes down to. People buy from people they trust, they know, like, and trust. A lot of you guys, uh, they know, but they don't like or trust you, which is still going to stop you from getting business. Um, like Josh said, take interest in people. Yes, genuine interest. Genuine interest. It's just so, just let, my bad, I didn't mean to cut you off, but that's one thing that I've learned about selling and just building relationships in general and just going to networking events. Like usually I see people in networking events and they float around, they walk around, not really knowing what to say or what to do. I could definitely tell who's lost and who knows exactly where they're supposed to be in a networking event. And when I talk to people, this works for me. This might not work for you, but I just try to keep the conversation on them. And if they ask me questions, you know, I'll give them an answer. But most of the time, people genuinely like to talk about themselves. It's not, it's not being selfish. It's not being narcissistic like a lot of people think. I think just, it's just part of our human nature. We just like talking about ourselves. Right, right. And it comes down to we like to be understood. We, we, we have a desire to be understood. 
It's part of our identity. We're all here to express our highest self, and we want to be understood. That's why people are so quick to show you their content, show you their work, show you their music, show you their films. We all want to be understood. And with that, help them to be understood, or help them to feel like they're understood, and that will take you, that will take you such long ways. Um, you know, such long ways. We, we do we do this podcast because we like to we like to share information, like to talk. Um, you know, I, I like I like listening to podcasts just because it's something in the background. That's what I suppose. yeah. <laughs> So it's kind of funny because before we started filming, I kept talking about, man, how's our voice sound? How's our voice sound? Right. For the reason, because I was like, it's going to be background noise for half the people. Right. You know, that's, that's a serv- I know it's a part of the service that we're providing you guys is just something to play in the background. And that's, that's completely okay. Um, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that, man. Not at all. Be of service, you know. And uh, that's what, I don't mean to cut you off. That's what, it, that's what it means, in my opinion, in this world. I call it giver's gain. If you give more than you, if you give and don't expect anything in return, then the universe will work more in your favor of giving you back more. That's that's at least that's the way that I feel about it. See, even here, man, I still learn stuff about Josh. I learn stuff about stuff he's learned. He learns stuff about what I've learned. And giver's gain is a great uh, term for it, and I'll use that going forward. Yes. Giver's gain. It might be the title of this video. <laughs> um, let's just talk about that though. Givers yeah. gain. So, what 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 type of things can you give? I think we, we think we both agree the biggest thing you can give is an, is, a, is a listening ear. But beyond that, beyond that, wow. Um, time. If someone needs help with something, and if it's in your capabilities to help them, and if you have the abilities to help them, that as well. Um, you know, I've given a lot. Me personally, and not expecting anything back, and I feel like the universe has paid me back a lot. You know what I mean? And just uh, you know, I'm very blessed to be in a situation that I'm in now. You know, like I understand that I haven't, um, I understand that I haven't like blown up yet or anything like that. But right. still, just in the position that I am right now and the position that we're in. Yeah. You know, I'm very, very for one, very, very blessed. That I met you yeah. eight years ago. Yeah. You know, could have not went to acting class that summer. Would have never, you know, then we wouldn't be sitting here. But that's true. But what I mean by what I mean by I've I've given a lot is like if someone needs my help with something, and if I'm able to help them, I try to help them. But not because I expect to be owed back or anything. Right. But because I genuinely want to help. You know what I mean? Like I don't loan out money that much. I really don't. But when my closest friends. Who I who like my closest friends back at home when they come to me and they say, "Hey man, listen, I need this money." I pay them. I, I give them the money and I say, "Hey man, just pay me back when you can." Yeah. And they and then like a week later, two weeks later, they um they send me the money back and I forgot that I even loaned them the money. Wow. So it's like it's not that big of a deal because these are these are my good friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why I say the small circle counts. But my bad, dude. I'm going all over the place. But as far as giving and gaining, right, a good example of this would be one time I helped somebody move, mm-hmm. right? Wasn't expecting anything. Mm-hmm. Wasn't expecting no payment or anything. I was just doing this out, out of the goodness of my heart. Mm-hmm. because, And I genuinely didn't want anything. And then at the end of the day, after I was done helping this person move, they tried to give me $100, $150. I can't remember if it was $100, $150. It's like, hey, man, listen. I, I did this because I just want to help you. Right. Keep that money for yourself. And he says, dude, I cannot, I cannot give this. I cannot, I have to give this to you. Mm. So, you know, he gave it to me and I felt bad for taking it. You know, I tried to fight it back, but that's just an example of doing something. You know, that doesn't happen all the time. No. You know what I mean? I'm just very lucky that it did happen. But giving, doing something and ex- doing something to help someone without expecting anything back in my opinion, is one of the best way to move. You just have to create a boundary of how much you're willing to give. Right. You know what I mean? Because you also have to be protective of yourself and not damage yourself in the process. You also have to give to yourself as well so that you have to make sure you have room for that. Absolutely. This is Black Hollywood. We're going to continue this conversation on giver's gain. And we're just going to do it in another episode that's solely dedicated to that. As far as it goes for uh, friends in L.A. Um, or friends anywhere, Just know before you ask who's been a good friend to you, ask yourself 